CTE. We are back. It is Monday. It is an amazingly beautiful day. So I'm sitting outside. So hopefully it won't get too noisy. But we are back with Avon and now Connor, who is um, her new friend at school. And he, in the last chapter, swung by where she lives and they went exploring a little bit in that shed. And remember, they um, had found previously some um, old journals and things and the person whoever it was they were quite the artist and now and there was also tarantulas in that so there's still that mystery about that but then Connor has come back and they've been in the last chapter and they were hanging out and both Henry and Josephine keep acting like they feel like Avon is almost someone else. It's sort of interesting. So that's another little piece of the mystery. But Connor and Avon pulled off like that amazing prank with the, you know, pretend shootout that they do in the little stagecoach pass arena. And uh, didn't go terribly well. I mean, it went well, but it scared like all the families and the kids. And so they got in a little bit of trouble for that. But <clears throat> I think mom and dad were actually sort of laughing about it too. So we're on to chapter 12. So let's see what's going to happen. Okay, so Connor and I have been spending a lot of time together. So my parents asked me to invite him for dinner after school. At lunchtime, I made my way to the bathroom as usual and washed my feet. I stared at the stall. I just couldn't do it that day. I felt too happy and I was excited to see Connor and invite him over. I didn't need another bathroom stall lunch ruining my good mood. So I headed to the library to find Connor, once more taking the longer, quieter route around the office. I nearly tripped over that kid again as I rounded the corner. Gosh, I'm sorry, I said. Next time I would definitely remember to jump over him. That's okay, he said softly, never raising his head. I walked away, but stopped a moment to look back at him. He stared down at his sandwich and grapes lying next to him. I wondered why he would be eating out here on the hot sidewalk by himself. He looked about as forlorn and pitiful as I must have looked cowering in the bathroom stall to eat my lunch. How could I just walk past him again, as though he were invisible, as though he were some speed bump in my way? I went back and stood over him. He looked up at me, his hoagie sandwich midway to his mouth. Sweat trickled down his brown cheeks. Do you mind if I sit down? I asked. He looked around for a second like he thought I must have been talking to the brick wall or the lamppost nearby. And when he looked at me, he shrugged his shoulders. Okay. I dropped my school bag on the ground, eased the strap off from around my neck, and sat down. He watched as I carefully opened my bag with my toes and pulled out my lunch. I spread a napkin out in front of me, then lifted out my Cheetos, apple slices, granola bar, and peanut butter and jelly sandwich and arranged them on the napkin. What's your name, I asked, as I opened the bag of Cheetos with my toes. Instead of giving me his name, he said, That's cool. <clears throat> How do you do that? Lots of practice. I'm Avon. He continued to watch with intense interest as I took out a Cheeto and popped it into my mouth. Zion, he said. Like the Bible? No, like the Matrix. Oh, I said, munching on my Cheeto. What's that? His mouth dropped open. Seriously? It's one of my parents' favorite movies. They love sci-fi stuff. They said I looked like Morpheus when I came out, all bald and mysterious. He frowned. I'm not allowed to watch it, though, because it's rated R. Oh, I won't be able to either. Bummer. This Morpheus guy sounds interesting. Zion rolled his eyes. My parents are nuts. They also named my brother Lando after Lando Calrissian, if you know who that is. Are you kidding? I am definitely allowed to watch Star Wars. Zion smiled. My parents would be impressed. I handed, footed actually, him a Cheeto. He took it from me without flinching. Can I ask you something, Zion? Mm-hmm, he said, chewing on his Cheeto. Why do you eat out here on the sidewalk by yourself? He slowly lifted a juice box to his lips and took a long swig. It's quiet out here. I tilted my head and raised an eyebrow at him. Is that the only reason? He stared at the ground but didn't answer me. 
It's okay, I said. I've been eating lunch in the bathroom. He looked up at me in surprise. I don't want the other kids to watch me eat. Everyone likes to watch a fat guy eat. They want to see how much food he can stuff into his mouth. But you're not that fat, I said, then cringed at my own words. I had meant it to sound nice, but it didn't sound so nice coming out. It's okay. I know I am. Well, I think you look great, I said. Zion handed me a grape. I took it from him with my foot and popped it into my mouth. So why have you been eating in the bathroom, he asked. I swallowed my grape. I don't want the other kids to watch me eat either. Why not? Because they'll think I'm gross. No, they won't. Yes, they will. How do you know that? Zion said. I just do. Once when I went to this children's museum with my parents, I sat down to play with Play-Doh at a table. Of course, I had to play with my feet, and everyone at the table stared at me. It is interesting to see. Then this one kid cried out, Gross! She's putting her feet in the Play-Doh! Kids are dumb, Zion said. And then his mom looked at my mom and said this, Would you mind not letting your daughter put her feet in the Play-Doh? Jerk, Zion muttered. What did your mom say? I smiled. She said she would make sure I used my butt cheeks instead. <laughs> Zion laughed a big, full belly laugh. Oh, that's classic. I ate another Cheeto. Before that, I had never realized people thought feet were gross. Anyway, that was right before starting kindergarten. You know what the first day of kindergarten is like for a five-year-old with no arms? Zion grinned. Maybe even more difficult than for a chubby five-year-old. Maybe. The kids asked me so many weird questions. I mimicked little kid voices. Did someone chop your arms off? How did you finger paint with no fingers? How do you use scissors with no hands? How will you play duck duck goose? Are your armpits ticklish? How do you wipe peanut butter off your face? Actually, what the kids really asked was, how do you wipe poop off your butt? But I wasn't about to tell Zion that. And no, I'm not telling you how either, so just stop wondering. It was exhausting, I said. I bet. They asked me stuff like, did you eat a skyscraper? And do you weigh more than my dad? I scowled. No wonder Zion was so insecure about his weight. I'm sorry. School really sucks sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah. So can you do everything everyone else can do with your feet? Mostly. I mean, things are always harder. Like the hokey pokey. When the song says, put your right hand in, I kind of just stand there like a mannequin. And I have nightmares about flag football. Try running and grabbing someone's flag with your foot at the same time. Slightly difficult. Yeah, I can definitely see how that would be hard. The only sport I can really play well is soccer. Are you going to try out for the soccer team in the spring? Uh, I don't know. I played soccer back home in Kansas, but you know, I had a lot of friends and I'd always gone to the same school. I hardly know anyone here. You know me, Zion said. I smiled and handed Zion another Cheeto. Would you mind if I ate lunch out here with you again sometime? He beamed. Okay. Zion and I ate the rest of our lunch together that day, hidden away on the far side of the office where no one could watch us. Wow. So, like, I you know, I feel like things are getting better. Like, I mean, she, Avon is just not afraid to be her, right? Like, and you know how she walked, she almost tripped over this boy, um, as it turns out, it's Zion. But she didn't know who he was. And, you know, she is definitely feeling pretty uncomfortable herself. And she was just going to keep walking. But then she thought, and don't we sometimes do that? We start to just keep walking, not paying attention to whoever's there, what's going on. And all of a sudden it sort of hits us. I could stop and say hello. This might be somebody I would like to know. Like, how do you know if you just walk right past them and ignore them? And in fact, that often happens to Avon. So I think it was sort of a good moment where we get to see that she stops and thinks about it and makes a different choice than she originally was going to do. Like she was originally was going to run to the library to talk to Connor. So now, of course, Connor doesn't know her news, but um, about coming to dinner. 
but maybe in the next chapter we'll see that but the fact that she took that moment to just turn around and sort of be like hey and you know she doesn't her first thing when she's talking about him and the way we're first introduced to him we don't really we don't know that he's a person of size right she doesn't it's not the first thing she notices about him um she does just say why are you eating out here but she goes how could i walk just walk past him again as though he weren't invisible as though he were some speed bump in my way and i think a lot of times we have that same moment when we think huh i could make a different choice right now so i love seeing that in that story and I love seeing that Avon's the same as we are sometimes. We, we're busy with what we want to do. She was going to go see Connor. And she was just sort of ignoring the person she stepped over until she took a second thought. So I love that. And we don't know anything. She doesn't immediately say he's like a really big kid or anything. She just talks about, you know, asking if she can sit down with him. And it isn't until a little bit later in the um, story that we find out that he's a person of size. He's a little bit bigger than maybe other kids and that he's been teased about it. So um, they sort of have that something a little bit in common where they know how it feels to be different and to be sometimes made fun of and not included because of whatever is a little bit different about them. And honestly, if you think about it, sometimes we're all like a little bit different and I really, it's hurtful to be excluded just because of your differences. Anyway, differences is what makes us sort of interesting and fun. So I love that she has taken that time to meet this new guy, Zion. And he has an interesting name. So that was sort of cool about the Matrix, even though you can't watch it. But that his brother is named after... Um, uh, a character there in Star Wars so and they both like Star Wars so they already have something in common uh, and then she does ask him you know why are you in here and then she shares with herself she's not embarrassed to say well I've been eating lunch in the bathroom no uh, so pretty fun I love the fact that she, this moment came and that they got to do this um, together to eat lunch together and then she says it's not like a one-off she's like can I eat lunch with you again sometime like like she likes him he's a nice guy he's sort of funny you know so anyway love the end of chapter 12 we're gonna be moving on to chapter 13 next hope you're enjoying this as much as I am have a great day get out in the sunshine hopefully it's finally springtime and our cold weather is almost gone talk to you later bye bye